My girlfriend is always ranting and raving about how cute and adorable her wee dog is. And so I thought I would turn him into the least cute thing that I could think of, which is a Nazi. Buddha. Do I gas the juice? My name's Marcus Meekin, but for the people that don't know me, I go by Count Dankula. Better known to most of us as the Nazi pug man. A man who trained and filmed his girlfriend's dog performing a Nazi salute has been fined £800. The video posted on YouTube showed a pug lift its paw to the command of Sieg Heil react when it hears the words gas the Jews. Yeah. He said gas the Jews 23 times. What's funny about that? He's a good wee Nazi. He's been convicted of being a thought criminal. He has no idea how much of a dick he is. Sieg Heil. <laughs> I think you're a Nazi. How... It's not going to appeal the sentence. It's not going to appeal against it. Subscribers on YouTube now have got over 400,000. Please welcome Hal Dracula! It's not right. You're profiteering <laughs> off your crimes. I never asked for this. You are not a victim! The lies against me have actually taken away pretty much all of my income. Marcus Meekin is a criminal, guilty of posting a YouTube video judged grossly offensive and containing menacing, anti-Semitic and racist material. He claims the video was a joke. Others claim Marcus is a Nazi. His case has opened up a stormy debate on freedom of speech and what it's okay to joke about. I'll be looking at all sides of that debate with Marcus and asking why after all the offense he's caused, he still thinks what he did was funny. It was Coatbridge, where I grew up. It's pretty much a dying town. Like, after all the, uh, the coal mines and the ironworks and everything shut down, like, uh, a lot of people just started leaving. You know, there's not really much in the way jobs and employment or anything like that, so it's, uh, it was just boring. So what was your set? Uh, ours was just sort of, you know, stretched ears, piercings, emo rock, metal music, skateboarding, and we spent a lot of time in the computer. Where are we going? Going up to the office. The office? Aye. Uh, whereas man, man Cave sounds a little bit cringy, but yeah, we're up. I went to university, I got my degree in computer games design, I made a portfolio and everything like that as well and just everywhere I submitted my portfolio nowhere was interested and so I just I ended up working in call centers and stuff like that like uh, money was crap I know it sounds cringe but my life didn't really have meaning if I'm being honest this is where I this is where I annoy people for a living <laughs> I just thought, I've got all this spare time, I'll start a YouTube channel, me and my friends will just make stupid, dumb shit post videos like that either don't make sense or they're just, you know, funny or offensive and I'll just put them on the channel. I've got a green screen. Check, 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 check. Happy Danky and 420 Blazed faggot. Trolling and shit posting, like that's pretty much it. Trolling and shit posting. If I said shit posting to someone, I'm not sure they'd know what I meant. Like, basically, it's really bad Photoshop, really bad video editing and stuff like that. That can be called a shit post. Sometimes it could be an image that just makes no sense. Sometimes it's an image that's just the purpose of it is to piss people off. In July 2016, Marcus had just eight YouTube subscribers when he posted, Mate, your dog's a Nazi. The video that changed his life. For legal reasons, it's difficult for me to show you the entire two and a half minute video. But here are the key points. At the beginning, he says he's doing this to wind up his girlfriend. So I thought I would turn him into the least cute thing that I could think of. And at the end, he says he's not a racist. Not a racist, by the way. I just really, really wanted to piss her off. But in between, he says gas the Jews 23 times. Whenever I would go to the kitchen and make myself a tea or a coffee, I would always give him a treat. But did you buy a treat? Aye, that got your attention, you fat bastard. When I went down to give him a paw, he raised his hand before I'd even had a chance to put it in my hand. 
And that's when I sort of laughed to myself and went, oh, that looks a little bit like a salute. Heil. Die Heil. Sue loves Buddha more than me. If this house was on fire right now, she would grab the dog. She was just always constantly going on about how cute and adorable the dog was. The trigger word was uh, gas the Jews. I just sort of th thought, what, what is the worst phrase that a Nazi would say, like, that I can get him to react happily to, which would obviously cause Sue maximum upsetment. This cute, adorable dog reacting happily to something horrible, like, that was the joke, and that was, that was the worst thing I could think of. Did it ever cross your mind that people might take that phrase badly? Yeah. Yeah, it did cross my mind. Seized upon by an outraged media, Marcus's video went viral, millions saw it, and the authorities decided to act. Marcus was arrested and, following a prolonged court case, found guilty of a hate crime and fined 800 quid. While Marcus has received some high-profile support... I'd read about this a while back and actually tweeted in support of this bloke, cos I think, with jokes, you shouldn't have to spell it out. You can do jokes about anything. You can do jokes about anything. It's fair to say some comedians haven't exactly embraced Marcus's case. I didn't think it was a joke. I don't think it was remotely a joke. I think it was a framing device for someone to be nasty. But do you think it was anti-Semitic? I think it was anti-Semitic, yeah. I think, uh, I think it was a dog whistle to other people who are anti-Semitic to laugh at the death of six million people. Hello, right, man. I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. That's fine. Talk me through your creative process. Because, yeah, I mean, you're claiming to be a comedian. Uh -huh. I don't think you're a comedian. That's fine, that's up to you. You don't get to decide that, so that's fine. Well, no, this is it, though. Uh -huh. So far, you've said, you know what's funny? Hitler. Well, we come you know what's, You know yeah. what's funny? Uh -huh. The death of six million people. Not directly. That's, no, no, it's not. not directly. No, it's no. not. No, it's not. Like, see, basically, you think... Do you think that making jokes about bad things is the same as being happy those things happened? I think you're lying through your teeth. You know, to find the joke funny, mm -hmm. you have to acknowledge that the Nazis were bad mm -hmm. and the Holocaust mm -hmm. was bad. The whole point is the pug, a cute, adorable animal, reacting so happily to something horrible is the joke. I mean, I thought you knew comedy. We like this type of edgy humour and all this type of stuff. It's not edgy, that... it's cunty. <laughs> well, you can perceive it as right. that. We find it funny. The, the government got you on uh, gross offensiveness, OK? The courts of the land. And the government's always so right. You, you, no, I'm not saying right that, that, but when yeah. you say people try and get me on, what I'm getting you on here is yeah. you're a convicted criminal. I love this. This is like my Twitter mentions, but in real life. In real life, like the I'm glad you love it I because do. it's very serious. <laughs> I know. You could potentially have caused a, a, a rise in hate crime. How? How? Tell me how. Because Everyone it's a fucking that. dog whistle to anti-Semites. A, a dog whistle, right? Right. Explain how a joke can cause violence. Everybody says it. There's never it. any evidence. All right. Okay. Never, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Do, do you I'll have tell a you. study? You I'll have a study. You. Listen. You listen. You, you want me to explain? Yeah. I'll explain. You know. Okay. I'll tell you why a joke. Because it wasn't a fucking joke. It was you are hiding your nasty views behind a framing Dude, device. Do you want to know what my fucking politics were well, right up until I made the joke? I still have the reminder right there. I was a fucking communist, you melt. The Scottish Criminal Intelligence fucking division went through everything, all my inf emails, absolutely everything. They found fuck all. All they went on was what you're doing now, where we've got no evidence whatsoever of what this guy's politics actually are, but we think he's a you Nazi. I, I think you're a Nazi. That's great. I think, I think you're a prick. Because <laughs> you need brilliant. to work on your fucking research. Let's take five minutes. Is that all right? Sure. OK. Let me clear this up. In sentencing, the judge pointed out that Marcus had no previous convictions, was at a low risk of reoffending, and in his words, had led a generally pro-social life. Of course, he did also convict Marcus of an anti-Semitic hate crime. For a moment, let's put the judge's ruling to one side, give Marcus the benefit of the doubt, entertain the idea that he wasn't advocating genocide, but the video was a genuine attempt at humour. Are there some things that you just shouldn't joke about? These arguments over online content are being felt just as keenly in the broader world of comedy. 
where battle lines have been drawn in London's famous stand-up circuit. What are you doing down in London? Uh, my mate Andrew Doyle uh, invited me down. Uh, he wants me to attend a comedy night that he's putting on in his club, uh, Comedy Unleashed. It's focused on free speech comedy, but it's no holds barred. You can say whatever you want, and that's that's my favourite kind. I like I like offensive comedy. I just wanted like a forum where, it, with, without judgment, I could go on a stage and, and just be really racist, like, pro <laughs> but like properly vile kind of white nationalist shit. And I wanted to do it under the guise of humour. No, I wanted to say these are jokes, but what about them Jews? And you know what I mean? Like, what about, you know, like rats, aren't they? Marcus. All right, man. Hello. Hey. How's it going? I'm all right, man. How are you okay. doing? How are you? I'm all right, man. What's up? So the whole point of setting the night up was that so many comedy nights seem to have this sort of homogenous quality, like everybody's, uh, you know, left-leaning, everybody's uh, on one side of the political spectrum. So we wanted a breadth, you know, so we have left-wing comics, we have right-wing comics, we have uh, leave voters, we have remain voters, uh, and we do get a mix in the audience as well, we get the whole thing. But the fact that we have right-wing comics every now and then apparently makes us a right-wing knight. Yeah. It makes no sense. So the, the thing with being, the good thing about being called a Nazi comedian, right, is that now I've got a niche. <laughs> I've, got, I've got my voice, I've got something to write into, right? Problem is, I haven't got any racist, sexist, homophobic jokes. The other point about the night is we say it's pro-free speech, but really what we mean is we don't want people to self-censor. We don't want comics to second-guess themselves. They just want to experiment. Don't worry about creating a safe space. We don't believe comedy should be a safe space. You were born a biological man, and now you're living as a woman with cerebral palsy. Let me correct you there. <laughs> he went down. Oh, I was born a healthy biological male. But by the age of six, I realized I was a disabled male. The whole point here is that people are going to experiment and, and do stuff, and they're not... The audience isn't going to assume the worst of them. It's that bad faith interpretation thing, right? It's like if someone mentions, say, uh, homosexuality, a bad faith audience would be like, oh, well, clearly homophobic, or you're trying to, you're trying to spread some kind of homophobic message. A, a, a good faith audience, an audience that is comedy literate, will look at the comic and say, okay, what are they trying to do there? What's this about? Uh, they're not going to assume the very worst motive. My husband's black, namaste, and um, I didn't know we met in a club, and... Um, <laughs> If I let him rape me, he'll make me a meal. But it is, um, I'm kidding, you can't rape a gay. But um, <laughs> I've tried, hashtag me too, but you just, you just can't. What did you make of it? Brilliant, brilliant. Offensive, terrible, fantastic. The best thing about comedy ever. But actually, when you're in a space where everyone sort of laughs about things, it sort of puts you all on the same level. If you're not into dark humour, I wouldn't come to it. But it's very, if you like dark humour, it's definitely a place to come to it. I enjoyed it a lot. Even for me, though, the last headliner was too much. I, I, don't, I hate to say it, but for me, even some of that comedy was racist. I, I really didn't like it. I wonder what it said that he thought was racist. I can't imagine what that... No, seriously. I admire all the things the black community has given us, right? They have. You have to respect that. All the, the music, everything else. <laughs> Help me out. The death penalty without black men in America, that'd be useless. And I think... <laughs> and you know the one joke people got angry online about the other? It was the, uh, the death penalty joke about black people. But that's, um, that's, an, uh, that's an affirmative joke that's meant to say it's ridiculous how many black people are on death row. That's what it says. I'm not saying, let's, you know, let's pull the switch. So how come all of these comedians can get away with saying grossly offensive material on stage, but Marcus can't say it on YouTube? Well, a lawyer told me that any one of these jokes might be considered a public order offense, harassment, a hate crime, or if posted online, a breach of the Communications Act. But ultimately, it's up to the police who they arrest. It's up to the prosecution service who they charge. And I think it's fair to say that if you go to a Scott Capiro gig 
you should probably expect to find some of the material unpalatable. It's not about the audience. It's about me. The lights are pointed my way. This is all arguably only about me, not about you. What does seeing a night like this make you think? It gives me hope. It does. Like, I know it sounds kind of cringy to say that, but you see the fact that there is a place that people can go and can tell whatever kind of joke that they want, and basically people are the judge of whether or not they like the joke. Nobody's calling for bans or arrests or anything like that. And even though people will go, oh, it's a Nazi event, it's an alt-right event, and like take all the usual garbage points that people try and use against us, that instead just gets made fun of. With your brand of humour, this crowd would be on board with what you do. OK. Have you ever done a stand-up set in a club? In a stand-up club, no. I've done live yeah. events, but I've but done... But in a comedy club? No. I think you should. I think you should do it here. I do. You're really asking. I know. You're I, I, you knew I was going to ask that, but I just, I genuinely think you should. OK, I'll do it. Right. Are you serious? Yeah, I'll do there it. There we go. On your head, be it. Because I'm going to... Yeah, it's yeah. It's <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Like me, you may have assumed that most comedy nights are like what we saw in East London. But it turns out that there's a backlash against this type of edgy humour. Quantum Leopard is run by James Ross. I noticed that you stopped filming when I was half naked. And that's just this is outrageous. I think that's the kind of truth that the public need to see. Who thinks there's a place for comedy that's, well, nice. We're definitely within fire safety capacity, OK? <laughs> Give me a chip, no good reason. What is Quantum Leopard? So, uh, Quantum Leopard is a lovely night. Um, it is uh, an award-winning, uh, kind of lefty, no-kicking-down, lovely, fluffy Saturday night out uh, at the Comedy in London. Uh, a list of quick things to run through. Uh, firstly, like, uh, I, I realise it's only five minutes, so technically it's a paid gig. Um, I have a fiver for all of you. Ooh. If any of you are doing anything that's like crowd work, audience interaction, etc., um, please only do it with people who are in the front row and who are wearing a green sticker. If they're wearing a green sticker, it means they have actively consented to being talked to. Um, if they're not wearing a green sticker, it means they have not. Cool. Please, even if they are wearing a green sticker, don't be a dick to them, because if they are, I will have to find you and I'll peel you open. Content policy, uh, uh, please, uh, no racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, no chav no ableism, no whorephobia, and uh, no picking on the audience, no uh, rape as a punchline. Um, rape is not a punchline, there's a line for which you should be punched. Um, any questions about any particular material, then feel free to ask me. Um, the answer is, yeah, that's probably fine. Thoughts? Theories. Anyone? All good? You can discuss race, right? Say again? Yeah, yeah, totally fine. Like, the, the dividing line is like, um... This is that. Say again? Yeah, that's it. Like, that's basically it. Like, you, it's just, you know, you treat the material with respect. You know what I mean? Like, your experiences of, I'm guessing, anti-Semitism, totally fine. Your experiences of being a proud black man, mm, less so. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of where we are. So, all good? Make sense? Yeah, cool. It's just like, it's just common fucking sense. Like, please don't be a bellend. We operate on a pay-what-you-like basis. We have a uh, gender balance booking policies. What's the reason for the content policy? It's about making it a fluffy and inclusive night, cos, like, if you're going into a th uh, thing and you're a woman, like, loads of really tedious, misogynistic nonsense, like, that's going to put you off. Um, similarly, racism, homophobia, transphobia, all of this sort of thing. Like, it's, it's also, it's just, it's lazy, it's hack, it picks lazy victims, and it's not interesting. Like, we've all seen it. That's been done to death 30, 40 years ago. <laughs> There we go. That is... That is... This is a symptom of raising a two-year-old boy, is I uh, just, like, being burped by somebody else has become an expectation in my household. So I'm not doing that like some sort of peasant. No! Burp me! Change me! Worship and adore me! Feed all of your income into me for the next 20 years! Is this code of conduct going to affect your set? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I am a Jew, uh, Joe Jacob, Jewish name. You know, a name so Jewish, uh, it might as well be Jew Jacobs. Um, uh, just a step up from Adam. 
you know the audience interaction rule here. Yeah, they got badges on. They got badges. Green means speak to me, but don't abuse me. Red means don't speak to me, don't abuse me either. I believe. <laughs> got an opera fan in. <laughs> you tell, tell him. Does she do it? Does she kill that priest? No. Oh, hold on. Do you have a green sticker? All right, forget I said that. <laughs> if you want to do material about your experience of racism, homophobia, transphobia, misogyny, all this sort of stuff, brilliant. Like, we've had so many really amazing sets um, that have, like, they've made you laugh, they've made you cry, they've made you learn something about the human condition, like, the full experience that you would get with, like, any form of really accomplished and well-delivered art. Now, you would think that being a transgender comedian, and yes, I do get a quid every time I say the word transgender, you'd think it'd give me a unique insight into all of your minds, all the male and female and everything in between, but it's not that simple. It's a double-edged sword. For example, gentlemen... I don't particularly know where the clitoris is either. <laughs> but unlike you lot, as a woman, I'm at least willing to stop and ask for directions once in a while. <laughs> People say, like, oh, well, you can't do racist jokes, homophobia, you can't cover, do racism, homophobia, transphobia, all of this sort of stuff. Like, well, what is there left with? Like, what kind of life do you lead if your only experience is of racism, homophobia, transphobia, etc., 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 and only in a way that will be a problem for our content policy? Like, you are, you're literally, like, that, that's a national front guy. Like, that is what that is. That's your life experience. Hey, where's my cat? <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> I thought it might be nice if Marcus had the opportunity to visit Quantum Leopard, but James didn't seem so sure. In fact, like dozens of other comedians, activists and commentators we approached, he refused to meet Marcus at all. So on the, on the final round of teething, just like, how many teeth has this fucking child got, you know what I mean? So I'm struggling to understand the reticence to engage. I'm not going to debate with him about why fascism is bad. Have you seen the video? <laughs> I genuinely, I've not seen the Nazi bug video. This sounds like an idiot dicking about who's just got, like, no conception of how serious these things are. Do you want to guess the Jews, Trotsky? Do you want to guess the Jews? No? No response, because he's well brought up, this cat. I don't know if you're Jewish or if you have Jewish family. I mean, I've... I've Had. Been... They're all dead now, partly a result of mates of this cunt. What I see of him now is somebody who is a free speech advocate, which, like, any idiot now knows is, like, code for men's rights activist alt-right bullshit. And he's doubled down on that, and he's now palling around with actual, real fascists. Since his arrest... Marcus has certainly associated with the political fringe. He's had right-wing activist Tommy Robinson round for tea. It is a complete joke. He says it's a joke. Three million people watched this video and none of them complained. Appearing with him on conspiracy theorist Alex Jones's show. Mark and uh, Tommy introduced uh, the world to the dreaded Hitlerian creature. Uh, this is a uh, Buddha, the uh, future chancellor of the Fourth Reich. <laughs> <laughs> He's spoken at the Tommy organised Day for Freedom rally. We need to work together to protect our freedom. Been branded all light by Hope Not Hate. And he's joined UKIP, even becoming one of their candidates in the recent European elections. Some of which makes joking about the Holocaust seem more sinister. Let's see what Steve McLean thinks. Tell me why you joined UKIP. Because they are the only party that care about freedom of speech, and freedom of speech is essential to preventing horrible things from happening in Not society. Not true. Is that why you speak to Tommy Robinson? It was mostly because nobody else came out to help me. To bring awareness to my actual case and get supporters, that's what I was trying to do. But the kind of awareness you brought to your case mm -hmm. were the kind of people that support a man who goes in far-right rallies. 
I, see, this is the thing that so many people do. See, the main thing, that, and pretty much the only thing mm. that people can try and get me on is Tommy. That's it. You've got nothing on me. This You've is got it. Nothing. I, I've got something on you. Like what? Tell me that. You associate with Nazis. Association. Guilt by association. That's all you people your have. Your friends, the people. That's you're all you have. When you say you people, what have do you I mean? Have I ever advocated for an ethno state? When you, have when I you ever say advocated? I, I don't know. Have you? You don't know. No, I don't I've know. Right. Okay. Have I have to take your word of it. Have I advocated for legal immigrants being deported? I don't know. No, I never these have. Aren't, these, have these I said that the white race? Have I said that the white race is superior? I don't know. No, I haven't. And you would know these things if you actually did some fucking research. Instead of just going, oh, he spoke to Tommy, he spoke to Alex Jones, that's all I need. You're not going to turn around and go, you know what, actually, I was just being a little bit anti Jewish. But here's, but here's the thing is, I could do that right now, and what difference would it make? I well, could turn around right now and go to everyone, yeah, I'm a Nazi, hail Hitler, blah, 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 fuck the Jews, and all that type of shit. I could do that right now. What difference would it make to my public perception? None. Well, I guess people already think that. Well, it so why, why don't I just come out with it then and then spread my views? Because no why one, because no one who's a Nazi recognises they're a Nazi. How? No one who's racist is, thinks they're is, racist. So... You are not a victim. <laughs> How oh, many? You me. need to get the fucking chip off your shoulder. You are not a victim. You are. You made a nasty video. Uh huh. And I say this as someone as I've kind of grown to like you a little bit because of the courage of your convictions. But I don't fucking agree with your convictions. They're way off. You are not the victim here. The victim is the six million people that died, that regardless, oh, regardless of your signal, fucking, signal, regardless, it's not, yeah, it's not it virtue signaling. Signal. How is it virtue it's signaling? Virtue. Basically, why do you know why people like me get so much hate? Because people like you want to feel good. Oh, fuck racist, am I right, guys? <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, we're you know such what? good people. You know what? We're such You're good people. You're absolutely right. Fuck racists. People like me want freedom of speech. You don't. Unfortunately, people like you want consequence freedom of speech. No. If someone watches your video and that causes them to go out and commit a, a violent offence, OK. Are you responsible for that? No, because people have agency. Same as you saying that you think I'm lying and I secretly have Nazi views. What if somebody watches this documentary, sees you saying that, believes you, and I get the shit kicked out of me in the street? Is that your fault? No, I think it's your fault for making a video <laughs> with a fucking pug. Uh, you know yeah, how many... Yeah. I, I so know, in other words, right, I, I, I deserve it. No, I'm not saying... No, 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 yeah, I'm not, okay. no, no. Did I say deserve it? No. Right, I'm so, not, I'm not so you deserve. have just victimised yourself again. <laughs> In other words, you, in other you words, you're saying I deserve it. You're fucking making you... shit up. <laughs> Poor me, I can't be a cunt in the street. Poor me, I can't be anti-Semitic. Oh. Poor me, I can't. I, I think I'm done. I think we're done. <laughs> I think we're absolutely done. You absolutely do not realise your entitlement. You do yeah, not realise yeah, yeah. the fucking chip on your shoulder. You do not realise. Uh, how nasty mm -hmm. you yeah. are. Yeah, okay. Because no one evil recognises their evil. They certainly don't, mate. They certainly don't. Sorry about the noise. <laughs> Far right or not, Marcus's associations do have real world consequences. The Jewish community leader who testified in Marcus's trial received scores of anti-Semitic messages, including death threats, which Marcus has publicly condemned. Marcus himself has been physically attacked in the street. He was even forced to move home, and threats have been aimed at his fiancée, Sue. That's a security camera set to install around my house, just so that I can make sure, you know, if my address got, does get leaked and people come to the house and try anything, hopefully that will put them off. Hopefully. <laughs> What's it like being worried about Sue and worried about your family all the time? It's not nice. It's not nice. I do get worried about what might happen to her or what effect it would have on her if uh, she got attacked. That's, that's my biggest fear. That's my biggest fear, that if people try and get to her to get to me, so, uh, yeah, that, I think about that a lot. It's not just Marcus's security that's under threat. It's his income. A guy contacted me asking me about the monetization on my channel. 
and I was kind of like, why the, why the fuck are you asking me this? What's that got to do with you? And I went in and I looked and uh, there you go, sure enough, everything's been demonetized. It turns out the reason he was asking me about monetization is because earlier on that day he released an article talking about Tommy Robinson getting demonetized. In the article, he referenced me and they called me far right. Subscribers on YouTube now, I've got over 400,000. Can I ask vaguely how much money you made in a year? I think maybe roughly around 30 this year. 30 grand goes a long way. Yeah, it does, but like there's a case of that's gone now. You have to accept some responsibility, don't you? What, what about you? Yeah, responsibility. See if it's social consequences, just people calling me a prick. You're a prick. I don't like your content. I don't like this. I don't like that. That is their freedom of speech. They absolutely can do that. But see when it becomes monetary consequences, they can take away your income and your ability to feed, clothe and house, house yourself. That's, that's, that's the route that we've gone down now. So see consequences like that? No. Some people watching might say, this is how you learn your lesson. Good, now you have to reform your ways. Sounds a little fascist, doesn't it? Basically, it's a case of we are going to absolutely ruin your life until you <coughs> think the way we do. <coughs> Stalin would have fucking loved these guys. <laughs> Marcus certainly shows no signs of reforming his ways. Later in the year, he was in the news again after regularly posting on a platform that was closed down for using racist and threatening language towards ethnic minorities. He has no conception of how serious these things are. I don't really approve of this, because I think with jokes, you shouldn't have to spell it out. No one evil recognises their evil. We don't want people to self-censor. Marcus Meachin, better known as Count Dankula online, Nazi pug man. This case became celebrated as a case about freedom of speech, the right to make jokes that other people don't find funny. What next? Um, well, the only thing that I can really do now is um, going into live comedy. I've actually got a show in Bethnal Green tomorrow night at the Backyard Comedy Club. So are you feeling nervous about tonight? A little bit, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. I'm either going to make everyone laugh or make everyone really angry. Yeah. Either way's a win for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Have you two been here before? You bring a different man every week. Jesus Christ. You whore. Love it. Why should a comedy club be giving a platform to a convicted criminal who distributes anti-Semitic content? They asked. The, <laughs> com the comedy club asked me. I've never had a problem with censorship in comedy because I'm six foot, I'm black, I'm from South East London, so... <laughs> no one's saying anything to me. <laughs> Offline, anyway. You're profiteering off your criminal acts. This is all I can do. This is... I am taking what is available to me because I want to put food in my belly, I want to put a roof over my head, I want to have kids one day, and that costs a lot of fucking money. Right, so I am doing what is available to me. This is the hand that, not even the hand I've been dealt, this is the hand that these people have left me with. Please welcome Count Dracula! We could have a show of hands. Who here is uh, voting Labour? Me too. <laughs> We're going to have a little discussion about why we need communism. <laughs> right. I think that communism would fix is racism. What do we do if people don't want to be tolerant? We would institute tolerance by force. <laughs> we need to be absolutely intolerant of intolerance. <laughs> if people won't act or think the way that we want them to, we can pass laws that force them to act and think the way we want them to. And it's only through this method that we'll be able to stop fascism. <laughs> China is an excellent example of communism working. For example, industrialization, establishment of a socialist society, agricultural growth, economic advancement, social prosperity, 45 million. <laughs> you know what, none of that even matters. Because it wasn't real communism, was it, Labour voters? Thanks very much. Thank you.
Thanks, guys. Despite the audience's response, Marcus is still a criminal. He breached the Communications Act by posting material that a judge considered grossly offensive. And as the judge said in his ruling, whether it's a joke or not doesn't really matter. I had fun. <laughs> Go on. Did you have fun? As a BBC journalist... I um... need to remain completely impartial and not laugh at your jokes cos you're a big, bad Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter in itself is a panic response. That's why you laugh when your feet and armpits get tickled and all that type of stuff. In this day and age, people are so used to not hearing offensive things that it's such a shock that they laugh. 